Hi Cadets, um, welcome back. This is lesson two of Algebra three. Hopefully you've um, watched lesson one, you've written down all the notes, you've done exercise one and marked it and asked any questions that you had. So now we're moving on to topic two. Now there's going to be two lessons on topic two because the first one's going to be trying to get okay with the basics and then the second lesson will make it um, a little bit more complicated on this topic. So this topic is about distribution. Now the first question, example number one, says simplify Question A says 2 and in brackets x plus 4. So this is a very much an Algebra 1 question. Just to quickly remind ourselves, what is distribution again? Now distribution is when you have um, two, to, two or more terms, two or more terms inside a bracket. And all of those terms need to be multiplied by something outside the bracket. So two or more ter terms inside a bracket that need to get multiplied that need to get multiplied by something outside the bracket. Now in Algebra 1 we've always been ignoring the, the exponents and so we've been avoiding them. So we were always making our multiplication a little bit easy. Now, all we're going to be doing is exactly the same concept of distribution, except we'll be bringing exponents, in, exponents into it. So let's just try a couple of Algebra 1 distributions to get ourselves happy with it. So um, I need to multiply 2 by each term in the bracket. Notice there's more than one term, so each term gets multiplied by 2. So 2 gets multiplied by x, so that's 2x, and then 2 times 4, which is 8. So each term gets multiplied by the 2. Notice those aren't like terms, so I can't add them, and so I'm finished. Right, on to the next one. Minus 2x gets multiplied by y, so that's minus 2xy. You're multiplying, so you don't have to worry about like terms when you're multiplying. You just multiply signs, numbers, variables. And now I multiply signs, and negative times a negative is a positive. 2 times 4 is 8, and x times no other letters will just leave me with x. Now those aren't like terms, so I can't add them. So those were Algebra 1 type and Algebra 2 type of examples. So what is it going to look like in Algebra 3? Well, for once, we're going to start multiplying letters together that are the same base. So as per usual, I'm going to distribute in my 2x in example C. So 2x times x, signs, numbers, variables. There's no signs to multiply, there's no real numbers to multiply, so it's just 2. But for the first time within this distribution, we're doing x times x, which is x squared. Now that's not foreign to you, it's just that we've never had to think about it in this context. And now it's 2x times 1, well anything times 1 just remains the same. Now what we noticed from the previous question, the previous section, which was adding and subtracting like terms, those are not like terms, because the 1 is x squared and the 1 is x. So to be like terms, remember, exactly the same variables with the same exponents. Now you might want to hit pause so you can write down these examples as we go. On to the next one. Negative 2x times x squared. Signs, numbers, variables. Negative times positive, negative. Numbers, there's just a 2. And now I have x times x squared. When I multiply powers of the same base, I add exponents. So I have 1, 2, 3. So I have x cubed. So it's just that you're having to think about your exponent laws in this context. Now I have a negative times a positive is a negative. 2 times 2 is 4. And x times x is x squared. So signs, numbers, variables every time. Notice again those aren't like terms because x cubed isn't like with x squared. Right, moving on. Multiply in signs, numbers, variables, 3 times 2 is 6, x squared times x, when you multiply powers of the same base, you add exponents, so x squared times x is 2 plus 1 is 3, so it's x cubed, and then 3x squared times minus 4y, a positive times a negative is a negative, 3 times 4 is 12, and x squared times y can't get any better because they're not the same base. So that's just x squared y. Those aren't like terms, so I can't add them. So none of this should be new to you. This is all signs, numbers, variables, and distribution. It's just that we're combining concepts.
Okay, let's keep going. Don't forget to hit pause whenever you want to keep up with the notes. Multiply 6x, 6a squared by a. Well, 6 and a squared times a will multiply past the same base. Add exponents. And then multiply 6x, 6a squared by negative 4. Remember, you're not adding, so you don't have to worry about like terms. A positive times a negative is a negative. 6 times 4 is 24. And a squared are the only variables there. Again, those aren't like terms because it's a cubed and a squared. Okay, so now let's start to get a little bit more interesting. Now there are three terms in the bracket. Not a problem at all because it's negative 2x times x squared, which is negative 2. x times x squared, add exponents. And it doesn't matter if there's 100 terms in the bracket. I just keep distributing. So a negative times a negative is a positive. 2 times 4 is 8 and x times x is x squared. And then finally, negative 2x times 1, well, anything times 1 just remains itself. Again, there's not like terms, because while they have the same letter, they don't have the same exponent. So questions can start to look really complicated, but it's exactly the same process every time. So don't let them confuse you. Right, 3a squared b times b squared. Signs, numbers, variables. No real signs to worry about. The only number we've got is 3. Now I have a squared. I'm just going to write myself a note. What have I got? I've got a squared b times b squared. Now there's nothing wrong in an exam of writing a little note on the side as long as it's completely separate to your answer. Now you'll notice there that you've got a squared with no other same bases. And I've got b to the power of 1 times b squared. So add exponents. I have b cubed. Carrying on. Positive times negative is negative. Numbers, 3. And now I've got a squared b times a. So that'll give me a cubed b. And finally, I've got positive times positive is positive. 3 times 2 is 6. And now I've got a squared b times a B. So write these little notes on the side to yourself in your notes. But in an exam, it's not a problem to write that on the side as working out, as long as it's nowhere near your answers. So let's check. We've got a squared times a. Remember, this is not like terms. We're multiplying. So we're saying to ourselves, we've got a squared b, a, b, which is a squared times a and b times b, which I would write as a cubed and b squared. So you've got to constantly remind yourself that I'm not adding here, I'm multiplying. So this isn't like terms, I'm just rewriting my letters in the best way possible. Right, now we start to get even more interesting. What's the first thing we should always do in every single one of these questions, which I haven't been doing so far, because every single one of these questions have been one term. That's one ginormous term. If I scroll up, that's one ginormous term. Now, for the first time, I think we have different terms. So don't forget that in every question that starts to look a little bit interesting, divide into terms. Now, why? Because here, this 4 has absolutely nothing to do with the distribution. The 4 is the first term. It's got nothing to do with the bracket. Only the minus xy is distributed. So the, as I've said numerous times this year, the most important thing I will teach you is divide into terms. So now negative xy needs to be distributed. So negative times a negative is a positive. Signs, numbers is 3. And then I've got xy times x. So xx, I can write as x squared and y. Now minus times a minus is a plus. 6 is the only number. And I've got y, xyy, y, which is x y squared. And now none of those are like terms because none of them have exactly the same variables with the same exponents. Right, on to j. j is one of those interesting ones which we should remember from algebra 2 and algebra 1 in that this means 3 times x squared minus 4 times x. So technically the 3 needs to be distributed in and the x needs to be distributed in, but that's messy and then we generally make mistakes. So don't forget that multiplication is commutative. Now that lovely big word is for the fact that the order does not matter with multiplication. 
So if you're multiplying, these are three factors I'm multiplying together. This is factor number one, factor number two, and factor number three. So I can move these into any order that I want. So personally, I would prefer to move my x to the front. Now the only reason I can do this is this is all one big term. These are all just being multiplied together. This isn't separate terms. So I'm going to move my x to the front and then have my x squared minus 4. And what this does is it makes my distribution so much easier because I can distribute the 3 and the x together. So this will give me 3 and x times x squared will be x cubed. And then my last distribution is 3x times minus 4. So positive times negative is a negative. 3 times 4 is 12. Variable x. And those aren't like terms. So that question was just meant to remind you about the swapping order. If you see k, that's also meant to do exactly the same thing. So k, I would first move the x to the front. Now the only reason I put k in is do you notice that this is now going to be negative 3xx x and then x minus 4y. But what is the best way to write xx? Is x squared. So I put this question in to notice that we need to do some, you know, a little bit of simplifying when we move that x. So now I can do my distribution only once, and I can distribute in my minus 3, so that's pos negative times positive is negative, 3x squared times x is x cubed, and then lastly, a negative times a negative is a positive, 3 times 4 is 12, x squared times y is just x squared y, and they are not like terms. Right, so what was this lesson meant to teach you? We're about to move on to an exercise just to make sure that you're happy with it. This was just meant to recap distribution, but to bring in the idea that when you multiply, you will be multiplying letters of the same base together, and so you need to be using law 1. So that was all this lesson is about. So here's some classwork for you. Again, I'll save this as a PDF into the Google Classroom folder. So either you can copy this down into your workbook or you can print it. But make sure that you do these. Make sure that you divide into terms every time and that you distribute and add like terms when necessary. Then you can mark it and don't forget to ask questions whenever you have them. Okay, well done. Keep going.